Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keezy and I am from Black Market. Today we are doing our first episode of Black Market TV. By the end of it, you will know how to put your logo onto a wall or a, you know, a piece of metal or a piece of wood in a way that looks realistic, like it was actually printed or painted there to begin with. Let's do it. All of the images and textures used in this video are part of Black Market's Street.zip collection, which is a collection of over 280 urban gritty stock photos. If you'd like to check that out, you can do so at blackmarket.co. If you don't have streets.zip or don't have the money for it, we're gonna be uh, uh, providing Street Texture 3 for free in the video description so that you're able to follow along with the tutorial the same as everybody else. The basic idea here is to apply some imperfections to our perfect vector logo to make it look like uh, it could have been part of the photograph. For example, the photograph has things like blur, noise, chromatic aberration, different imperfections that make it look like a photo. Our vector logo, on the other hand, is infinitely scalable and sharp and pointy and uh, it just does not look real. Let's begin by blurring it up a little bit and adding some roughness and noise to the edges. To do that, we can hold Control or Command and click the thumbnail of our logo layer, hide the layer. You'll see that we get this nice marquee selection of the outline. Click the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer button and select Solid Color. Choose White and click OK. So now we have a solid fill color and our logo is being used as the mask channel. So we can zoom in and you'll see that nothing has changed yet. What we can do though is with the mask selected, go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm gonna go with eight and then go image adjustment threshold. So where we previously had these pointed tips, now we have these sort of rounded off uh, edges which look a little bit more realistic. This is okay, but I wanna add some more roughness and variation to the edge of it. So let's go to filter, filter gallery. With spatter selected, you can play with the spray and smoothness radius. I usually find smoothness at 15 looks best for what I like. I'm gonna click okay. You can see now that we have completely destroyed our edge. It looks absolutely trashed. This is kind of what we're going for because this door is really weathered. It has seen better days. It is, however, still a little bit too sharp. So we need to go filter, blur, this time box blur, and I'm gonna do it by a radius of one pixel. So if you just kind of look and compare here, this white mark looks a lot more like it could have been in the photograph than it does here. This, it's super obvious that it's fake, and then after we apply that box blur, it's kind of hard to tell. Even without any shading, it already looks a lot more realistic. And speaking of shading, we can get to adding that in just a second. But first, we're gonna do a displacement map. If you're not super familiar with displacement maps, the basic idea is that you use values between black and white to deform your artwork uh, and make it look like it's been applied to it. So if we apply a displacement map to this logo, of our background image, it is gonna make the logo look like it's been curved to fit the surface of the door. To do that, let's select our background layer, right click and duplicate layer. Destination will be a new document named displacement. Don't be intimidated by displacement maps. More or less, we're just gonna convert the image to black and white and blur it a little bit and call it a day. After we've done that, we can go File, Save As, Displacement, and click OK. Make sure that's a PSD image, by the way. Go back to your original document and select your logo layer with the mask again. Right click and convert it to a smart object. The reason that we're converting it to a smart object is so that we can apply effects to it non-destructively. Let's go ahead and call our newly created smart object layer logo and unlock the background layer and then move our old logo layer to the back. And we're just doing this so that we still have it as a backup in case we need it, but it's out of the way. It's like the new logo layer, filter, distort, displace. For your image, you might need to tweak the values a little bit. I find something around 10 and 10 usually works well. 
Let's select the displacement map we just created and voila. You can see here that the logo is kind of being distorted to fit the shape of the door below it. One of the problems we still have with this image though is that the logo is being shown over the top of the entire thing. If the logo is painted on the top of this tan color, then any area that it's blue, it should be missing from. And if the logo is painted on this blue color, anything that is tan should be covering the logo. So let's go ahead and uh, select our background layer and then go select color range and then use the color range tool to take samples of uh, anything that is blue and you can shift click to add to your selection. You can alt click to subtract from your selection and you can adjust the fuzziness until you get something that looks roughly like the thumbnail that I have. With this, we can reselect our logo layer, toggle its visibility, and then click the create layer mask icon here and get our layer mask. Okay, so we've got our mask created and now we can move on to the effects panel. In the effects panel, we're gonna do three things. One, we're gonna blend it. Two, we're going to apply an inner glow to simulate the little paint lip thing. Three, we're gonna add a drop shadow for the same reason. You can double click the right hand side of the logo layer to pull up the blending options panel. First thing we're gonna do is apply the blending. Focus your attention on the blend if panel here. You can pull the slider from the left to the middle and you'll see that it's gonna begin to, in a really harsh way, uh, hide shadows. This is what we want, we just want it to be a little bit smoother. Option or alt click on the handle to split it and then you can drag each handle individually and you'll get a smooth transition between uh, opacity there. I like something about like that. Next we can go to the inner glow panel. I will go ahead and reset the values to default so that we can follow along this together. So first of all, blend mode normal. Color is gonna be black. Opacity I'm gonna set to 20. Noise to five. Choke to 20. Size to 10. The contour is important. So we wanna click that and then click this cone shape here. You can click anti-aliased for a little bit smoother of an effect. And then you just wanna adjust the range here until it looks like the paint has a little bit of a lip to it. I'm gonna come up and adjust the noise a little bit more and bring the opacity down. I actually think that looks good now. Now we're gonna go and do the same thing with the drop shadow, so click drop shadow. Uh, and my settings are about the same. So I've got 25 opacity, distance of three. The contour I'm using is this deep cove and uh, a noise of 1%. Okay, so with those layer styles applied, you are pretty much done. You can call it a day here if you'd like, or we can take it a step further. What we're gonna do is bring in another image from Streets and uh, we just wanna find something with high contrast that would be easy to make a selection of. Uh, I like something like this actually, so I'm gonna pull Street Texture 23 into my document and place it on top of the layer stack. Let's increase the contrast a little bit by going brightness contrast and just adjusting it. You'll remember that we go select color range. So I'm just gonna click on one of these whitish parts and then adjust the fuzziness a little bit and click okay. Let's go ahead and hide that texture, click our logo layer, group it, and then add a new layer mask. If we wanna tighten that mask up to make it look like it is a hard edge, we could easily go image adjustment threshold and that will do that. Though my personal taste is like this. We could take this even further by continuing to introduce new textures from streets or from elsewhere and just continuing to stack them and apply them and blend them in different ways. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and uh, turn on notifications. Black Market out.